first introduced to the concept of the project in Amy Kimmy Hayes' class, I was very concerned and I made it known to the rest of the class. Um, I haven't taught college students in close to seven years. So with the assignment being focused around 102 and 104 curriculum, I was a little concerned having no experience with the classes or the syllabi. Another student in the class provided me um, her syllabus to look through to kind of get an understanding of what I could do for my project. I spoke with the instructor and the first idea we scrapped almost immediately um, and that was having students analyze Google Images. So doing a random display. And through our conversations, um, she, she urged me to focus on something that I found interesting. And I love music. I can't sing. I can't play an instrument. But I love music. And it could be lyrical. It could be instrumental. Um, I have a very eclectic taste in music. So in outside research for a different project in the class and for my position at a Fortune 500 company as a technical communicator, I was looking at some of Edward R. Tufte's books, and he focuses on visual displays of information. One of his books shows a music map created um, by another artist and scholar, and I took that map and tried to figure out, well, how could I create an assignment for students that would give a visual representation and allow them to write a rhetorical analysis? In further discussions with the instructor, um, we decided we could let students complicate the map, give them an assignment um, showing that yes, music is everywhere from a gas station to a restaurant bathroom to a grocery store to the mall, walking around campus, you hear music everywhere you go. And in different areas you hear different genres of music. Sometimes you'll hear lyrics, sometimes it's simply instrumental. Um, a good example is I was shopping at Safeway a few weeks ago and lo and behold the Ramones came on. One, two, three, four. And it wasn't the instrumental version of the Ramones. So what is Safeway trying to tell me as I'm shopping through, you know, uh, prepared foods? So in the assignment we asked, I asked students to look at music um, as spatial what are their listening spaces? Um, public versus private. Um, public versus private, um, from the bedroom to the car to another car alongside of you at a traffic light to walking around campus and overhearing someone's iPod. Um, going and hearing live music versus pre-recorded music. Um, what's the accessibility of music um, with free download sites or paid download sites? <clears throat> and then offering them the opportunity to also partner with another student in the class to complicate the maps, um, such as comparing their playlists and their iPods. And once they've created a visual representation of their, their listening habits and spaces, then what does that say about our culture? What implications does it have in having them do a rhetorical analysis um, from that perspective? And one question that was raised among the classmates for this event was, well, what if they don't listen to music? You can make the choice not to listen to music, but you're still going to hear it. So even in that way, if the student can't afford an iPod or doesn't have a CD player in their car or doesn't have a radio in their car, they're still hearing music. So they could still map the spatial implications of music and what that says about our culture that way.